Okay, I want to go over some of the um, Excel charting things. So I'm looking on page 554, actually 552, the beginning of hands-on exercise one, and they have you make a chart. The first thing they do is you click and sell A5 and drag all the way over here. And then if you hover on this, you'll see a little quick analysis tool. They have you go to charts. When I say they, I mean the author. And if you look at the sheet, they want this clustered uh, column chart. So then that thing shows up, and then they would like you simply to move it into its own sheet. And we call that um, column chart. Okay. And hit OK. And then you'll see it comes over here and it stays right there. Okay, now I'd like to uh, move on to the next page. I'm looking at page 554. And they want to make an embedded chart. So they have you select A5 through B12. Maybe. Oops, just that right there. I'm now holding the control and I'm selecting this. And take note that I am also including the title because if you include the title, it makes it easier when making the chart. You can um, The titles will be included in the chart. And so I'm going to go to Insert. And they would like, if you see in the bottom 554, it's one of these um, bar charts. And they would like a stacked, what's called a stacked bar chart. And there it is right there. And he, they ask you to move it down here. I know you probably can't see it that well. I'm limited in my size here. And then I think if you go to some open area, they wanted you to adjust the size a little bit to something. I can't remember what it was exactly. Something like that. Um, Let's see. And that's about it. And then they want you to make a... Actually, I'm going to go back to that real quick. Yep, that's all there's to it. Note, now I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. You'll see we're going to mess with this down here later on, but that's in a different hands-on exercise. Okay, I'm going to make a pie chart. And they'd like to make a pie chart showing the, um, the number of new jobs. So I'm going to select... The titles. Note this time I do not select this. I'm just going to select the um, A6 through A12 and D6 through D12 holding the control. And then we're going to go to insert, choose a pie. And you can see by the image on page 555, they want this normal flat 2D pie. Something just like that. And then, of course, they want that moved into a new sheet called pie chart and notice that i always select the data first and then i create the chart okay so there is that chart there and it looks like that's it with the pie chart all right the next chart they want a combo chart and these are very interesting to be useful if you're demonstrating something they would like to show on the same chart the number of new jobs and the percentage of growth. So I'm going to select the um, the jobs here. And then I did not do the title this time. And then select this data here. Notice how these are totally different numbers. These are like big integers. And these are percentages. Anyways, the combo charts are right here. So I'm just going to hover. That one doesn't make any sense. You see, that one makes sense. That one does not make sense. So I'm just going to, they put some suggested charts here. So I'm going to click on that one. And then, um, I'm not sure if they want that one moved or not. They do want that one moved. So I'm going to go and uh, move chart, new sheet, and it should be called combo chart. And that moves into here, and I believe we'll be messing with this one later. Okay, I'm looking on hands on exercise two, page 569. They simply want you to change uh, the chart title. 
Well, there's a bunch of things I want you to do, but the first step is change the part type. This is number of new computer related jobs by 2020. And it's kind of small, so they wanted you. I, I'm just going to do a deal. Oh, here we go. Bold, and maybe, I don't know if they actually do this or not, but I'll make it a little bit bigger. Maybe 16. Oops, that did not change. There we go. And. Okay, on the pie chart, they want you to change the title here. Uh, to say new computer age or yeah new related jobs by 2020 and they have a little dash between here I guess I should do that oops and again they want this bold Oops, I don't mean to move that. Um, they want this a little bit bigger, I think 18. And they would like it bold. Of the whole thing bold. It's tricky. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, I see what the story was. The fonts are two different sizes. So I gotta select these and make them all like 18 and then bold them. Yeah. Oh, it's off center. I might as well move it over while I'm here. Oh, I'm gonna leave it. Okay, this chart gets number of. Now the combo chart, oops, this one here is going to get projected number of jobs by 2020. By 2020. Okay, they want you to add, uh, I'm back on the Outlook um, chart here. They want you to add a uh, access title to the left. And that would be the primary uh, vertical. And they want that to be job title. So I'm gonna try to click over here. It's kind of hard, see how you're working sideways. Okay, now one of the most common questions I get to this next one to get these. See, these are at 100,000, 200,000. Well, I just want the 100, 200, and then say in thousands. So you double click on that, you get this format access dialog box open. And down here, display units is where you want thousands. And see how now it just has the hundreds and then the thousands is listed there. It makes it a little bit easier to read. All right, I have the pie chart open here and I want to do some of the stuff. There's quite a few questions in the face-to-face -face class about this. One of the things is you see I'm on page 572 and I want to kind of make it look like that. Uh, one of the first things I want to do is is add data labels. And notice how all of a sudden they show up. And then those are the actual values, but they really want us um, to put percentages for one thing. And I also want to move them towards the center. Okay, I'm gonna go to more options and all right, what happened to our more options? Okay, there we go. And I really don't want the value. What I want is the percentage. Goof that up. I want the percentage, so don't don't de-check everything. So I want the percentage, and then we not want to um, 
change this font to something bigger. I'll just make it 18 for right now. And it looks, oh, and then um, a couple other things. I think they ask you to change the color of just this dark blue slice. Now, be careful, because when you first click in the pie, it's easy to get the whole pie selected. But see how just these three dots here selecting that slice? This is just this slice. Now you can mess with um, the fill. Oops. Sorry, I want to go over here. The fill, solid. No. I want just the, oh, I had all of them for a moment. I just want just this slice. Yeah, it's easy to get goofed up. And I think they wanted some weird orange color. Just so you can read that 6% better. And they wanted, this, while we're here, I'm going to do this slice. They wanted it red for some reason. Okay, and then here they also want this particular slice to be moved out a little bit. Okay, I think they want a 5%. You could just type 5% in here. Um, and it'll do it 5%. Oh, and now let's put the background color. Um, I keep hitting that thing for some reason. They would like to fill. So I've selected out here in the plain white. I want to fill. I want a picture or gradient texture fill. And it put my little fishes in there. But they really want. Um, I don't know what they want. Parchment. No, that doesn't show up very well. I'm going to choose this blue thing. It looks like what's in the picture. Again, I'm looking on page 572. And that's about it for that one. Let's see what else they have here. Yeah, that's about it for the pie chart at the moment. Okay, just a couple more things here. We're totally done with all the hands-on exercises. In here, they would like you to format a style. And these are predefined styles. They just simply want you to choose number two. And see how that changes the title and the puts the labels inside and things like that. It's kind of nice. Um, then they want you to go to the to the column chart, and um, they want to do some filtering here. So this is the filter tab. Let me close this out. This is the filter, and they wanted to get rid. Of, they don't want to show the number of new jobs. So do check that. Let me hit apply to that and notice how those went away and then they wanted to some reason take out the programmers and take out the CIS managers I believe so then it makes it look pretty much like what you have there it looks like they're changing the color a little bit too so here so if I click once I got all this data series um, changed and whoops sorry here we go Okay, it looks like they want to change these to a darker uh, blue. I'm just looking, I'm simply looking on page 581. It looks like to me like they want these a different color. Whether or not they asked to do that or not, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. And then on the data, they want you to add a spark line right here. So, I'm, so they actually do a little bit different. I click up here and here in the top of the column. If I want to insert a column here, right click, insert. And they want spark lines. So I do my spark lines a little bit differently than they do it. I click in one cell and we go to insert. Now your insert might look different um, actually. They want, I clicked on the insert tab here. They want a, um, see it says line, this is actually a spark line. And my data range is simply these two cells, which isn't a very good spark line, but it makes a good example, I guess. And then you hit, I'm gonna just hit okay here. And I'm gonna choose, now if you look on page 582, you notice it's blue with red dots on the end. So I need to find um, 
a blue line. Okay, and then they want to show the high point and the low point. Okay, so actually I'm going to change mine to something with right here, blue with red dots. There it is right there. It looks like what they have. I don't know if they ask you to do that or not. But they do ask you to have the same minimum value and the same maximum value. What that does is that makes the X and Y axis uh, data ranges the same for when I copy this. So I'm going to copy this down now. And so what it does is it just makes a tiny little chart of these two pieces of data and how they relate to each other. So not a good example of two points, but um, that's what that does. And that's about it for the hands-on exercise of Chapter 3.